I'm with Jeff Klingen and your call. Kilo Bravo 5, November Mike Bravo. November Mike Bravo. Okay, uh, Jeff, uh, talk to us. Tell us all about uh, your field day operation here. And just take the mic. Okay, Tom. Thank you. Uh, well, this is Northeast Mississippi Radio Amateurs Radio Club in Northeast Mississippi. We're based in Fulton, Itawamba County. Uh, we are not, we don't restrict our, our members or anything to this area. We reach out to all counties of, of North Mississippi. Uh, we have members from as far away as New Albany. Uh, New Albany, we have uh, members from Tishomingo County, uh, Amory, Monroe County, all areas of, of Mississippi here locally. And uh, we hold our field day each year at the Emergency Operations Center in Fulton. The local government here officials grant us the uh, privilege of using the EOC for our uh, field day operation. And thus we get to be in the uh, class F, which is EOC. Uh, this year we had a large crowd. We had probably 25 to 30 of our members here at different times. Uh, we've run in 4F class. Uh, had uh, really, really good luck. Uh, had Ray Novak uh, with ICOM with us this year. Uh, it's been a special privilege for the club to have Ray with us and a really exciting time. Uh, just uh, uh, been a great field day overall. Uh, this year the weather's been good, reasonably cool, and uh, just had really, really great time. Thank you. Your weather is very much better here than it was, is, or what am I trying to say? Where we were the last two locations, the weather was not very good, I'll put it that way. We've had a lot of flash flooding and uh, everything in the Memphis and the, the northwest Mississippi area. Uh, but you got a nice operation here. I just We just t did a quick tour, and maybe we can show some of the operating positions here. And uh, we can take some questions from people uh, uh, that are watching right now. Okay, um, let's do this. Um, what do you want to What do you want to show us first? Uh, would you like to see the CW part of our CW operation? Sure. Is that right here? That's right here on the on the left. Uh, we've got Larry Anderson. Uh, Larry's an uh, excellent CW operator. Uh, don't know what band he's on, but he's operating right now. And you can probably catch a little bit of his uh, expertise by listening to the speed and stuff that he's operating at. Sure. We'll sneak in here. Okay, well, this says 15 meter station. I guess uh, it may be learning. I'll see. Uh, working it's work, working, it's working 15. Uh, yeah. On the station to identify what band we're going to start out on. Okay. What's well, uh? Now you guys are stopping early. You started early, so you have to stop early, right? We started at one o'clock yesterday, and we'll be stopping our actual uh, operations at one o'clock, stopping our logging and things like that at one o'clock. Okay. All right. Well, uh, what, which way we need to go? This way or? Okay, we'll uh, try to go this way. Okay, so oh, all the doors are closed. Must be a lot of uh, stuff going on in here. It's a little warmer in here. A little bit warmer in here. We had not been keeping the door closed, but they've got an awful lot of stuff uh, trying to make those last few minute contacts and things. Uh, we've got some operators that uh, are not licensed observing, and, and this is our GOTA station over here. And, of course, GOTA, as you know, are, is a station where unlicensed operators or operators who haven't been on the air in quite some time can get on the air. 
and so this is our go to operation. This is our sideband operation over here, and as you notice, we got Ray Novak. Uh, he's working with a uh, person who's not licensed, kind of showing them the ropes and teaching them a few things uh, about amateur radio, hoping to maybe interest that person in getting a license. So, uh, have, you, have you had uh, any visitors, uh, many visitors, that come to the go to station? Uh, we've had quite a few. Uh, don't remember at last count. I think we had had uh, eight or nine. Uh, individuals come through the go to station uh, of those I think one or two were licensed operators who hadn't been on the air in over a year and the rest of them were unlicensed individuals That's cool. glad uh, glad you're doing that Freddie let's look over here and see what Ray's doing your first time guys this is cindy novak right here i didn't recognize her i didn't recognize her first how, how you doing cindy great great it's my first time on hf um usually use d star but today we're doing hf it's been really interesting but you got your license way, way back uh, a year or two ago didn't you i mean i remember in huntsville when you got it yep a couple years ago i'm an extra and um, just haven't used it very much but working on it today learned a lot cindy what's your call it's kind of like a raise isn't it November November nine Juliet Alpha. It's one one extra N. Yep. N N nine J A. That's Cindy's call, and of course Ray over here is N nine J A. We're gonna we're gonna watch watch Ray here. Are you are you are you you want to say hello? Good eve or good morning, everybody. I, I don't know. I think it's afternoon. We're getting this fine radio uh, on on the broadcast here. What? That's a seventy-seven hundred. Wow, nice looking radio. Thank you. Yeah, it's a seventy-seven hundred. We're running a seventy-eight hundred and then another seventy-seven hundred uh, as our main stations. So, I mean, I've seen the 7100s. As the number gets bigger, does the radio get bigger? Yes, sir, it does. We also can put out, uh, we've backed down the power to 150 watts, so we're running low power category. So that's a 200-watt radio? Uh, it is, but we've got it back down. There's not, not many 200-watt radios. I mean, used to that was kind of the standard back when I was growing up in the, you know, Sideband days and stuff, 200 watt, 180 watt, you know, PEP, and then everything went 100 watt. So it's kind of good that you've got that extra 100 on there. Well, an extra 50 for for field day here helps out a lot. So you, have you guys been making? Have have you made a lot of contacts personally? Uh, I don't think so, but uh, not not what I'm used to doing. But it's bands conditions haven't been too good on 15 and 10, and this is my first shot today on 20, but it's. It's pretty noisy out there. Now, they're, they're, uh, is it this location they've combined some antennas, or was that down at Olive Branch? It's at this location in the cabinet. I know Jeff will be glad to show you those. Okay. And I wanted to ask about that because you've got some filters and things that you put on the antennas here so you can operate more closely, right? Yes, sir. That way we can uh, use up to three stations on one antenna. Okay, cool. Well, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll try to look at that in a minute. I know you guys are going to be closing down here at 1 o'clock. But we can still talk uh, a lot here. Yep. All right. Four minutes left. Okay. Make a couple. Make ERB will make eight or nine contacts in four minutes. All right. What What have you got? Over, what is this over here, uh, Jeff? Uh, Anything? Is this something for the EOC or, or is it? No, this is field day stuff, isn't it? We actually have our own server. Uh huh. That, uh, we. We do a lot of uh, stuff with uh, just odd and end stuff, but the main thing for our server is field day. And all of our logs, all of our uh, laptops come back to here so that everything is updated continuously. We're running N1 MM logger, and everything comes back to the server and is updated, and everybody can see what everybody else is doing. And uh, if you'll notice, right here is our total at this time. Uh, looks like total QSOs. Uh, 1,762 uh, with total points of 3,045 at this time. Of course, that's unreviewed logs, so there could be a few that have to be removed from that or whatever. But everything comes through here. 
this is for the EOC over here. We have APRS running that we use with Skywarn operation. And then this is just a standard PC that we can either bring weather radar up on or anything of that nature that we need during a, uh, an emergency situation like severe weather or whatever. APRS, does it, actually, does it show weather or anything on it? Yes, it does. We have, we have it set up with the add-on for UI view to allow it to pull the uh, watches and warnings from National Weather Service, and it'll print those boxes. As of this morning, it actually had a watch box up here in the Memphis area. Yeah, it was actually kind of fastened to our rear tr uh, truck bumper the whole way down here. You guys got, got wet then. We had 10 inches of rain last night. Oh, my gosh. That's unreal. 10 inches. It was, it was uh, more than an inch an hour. That, that's unreal rates right there. There's nothing much you can do with that except just yeah. swim. Okay, well, is there is, you got another operation or something you want to show or talk? That's, we're here for you. Yeah. Uh, you were interested in seeing our triplex or in filter arrangement? Uh, it's right over here. Is it right here? Okay. Okay. Let's let's uh let's talk about this. I don't know if uh, yeah, Freddie can probably zoom in here. Okay. Now, th now this th this helps you guys to operate what on the same antenna but multiple bands. Is that right? We're able. We have two tri-band Mosley antennas. We have a TA33 full size on a 48 foot tower. We have a TA33 Junior that we can put up on our MCOM trailer with some short sections of tower. And so what we have is uh, here is in the cabinet we have two triplexers with filters for 10, 15, and 20 meters on the triplexers. So we can actually run three radios on different bands on each antenna. It's uh, it's a super super handy during field day. All of our all of our antennas come back to this cabinet, uh, and then all of our radios, the the feed lines from the radios come back to this cabinet. So at any time we can move any radio to any antenna that we have outside. Now, in, in addition to letting you use the same antenna with three radios, it also it filters out interference, right, between between uh, different uh, bands. Right. With the filters, the Dune Star filters in place on the triplexers, uh, we have had actually had a radio on 10, a radio on 15, and a radio on 20 transmitting and receiving at the same time with no interference. They operate the different bands. Just, it's unbelievable how smooth they are. Really, really clear. Well, that's, uh, that's cool. This is the first time I've seen this in operation like this anywhere. So, uh, is this something that you guys uh, uh, have had here for a while and, and keeping, or is it just something you're using for field day? Oh no! This is this belongs to the club. Uh, this we had the one last year, and on the on, for the tower antenna, and we liked it so well that we actually acquired the other other triplexer and three filters uh, to use with our, our portable uh, Mosley, uh, and it will it will stay in here uh, unless we get some kind of emergency where we have to carry our MCOM trailer out, and and we actually think we'll be using uh, multiple radios on on the single antenna but probably will stay in here. Yeah, there are probably people out there asking about this that uh, might want to do something like this. I, I would assume this is expensive. Uh, yes. The, uh, the filters are approximately $80 a piece, oh, okay. and then the triplexer itself is, I've forgotten, I'm not even going to call it because I can't remember, but by the time you get through, you'll have uh, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of five, $600 in the setup, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. I can't remember exactly what the triplexer runs. Well, that's not too bad. But one coax, one coax feeds the antenna, and you can set up three radios, one on each band, and, and go with it. That sounds like the way to go. This gives us the ability to, with the two antennas and the filters, if, if we come in for field day, we can actually set a radio up on CW on 15, a radio up on CW on 20. Let's say 10 is not open. And then we can turn right around and go to the other antenna. We can set a sideband station up on 15 and a sideband station up on 20. Thus, we have our we run 4F, so we have our four stations. Mm -hmm. If 15 and 20 is open, and we're running CW and sideband both, and it works really smooth. Well, it it, it looks like you've really, you know, you got a nice uh, facility to segment it. You know, you can have radios in this room, and I, I saw you had an area with cots, people sleeping. Uh, well, actually, no. Those cots belonged to the EOC. Uh, there was something they were didn't have a place to store, 
and uh, so they brought them in and and just put them in that corner there, and and that's where they've been. Uh, that don't, those don't belong to us; they belong to the uh, the EOC. But we. I thought I saw somebody sleeping in one. Well, yeah. I mean, you know how hams are. If they they find a place to sleep. It's well, I figured if he's here all night, I mean, you know, you 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 need that. I mean, and and I guess an EOC operation like this, or even your field day operation like this, you can. Uh, you, you, you have those different type things. You, you, people can sleep here if they have to, if there's a disaster or an emergency. And you can also have different operating uh, bands and positions in different rooms. Right, right. And that's the way we try to set it up. Uh, as you saw down on the other end, we had our CW operations down there on, in different rooms. And they weren't necessarily CW, but that's what we set them up with is a CW. And that kind of isolated the CW guys where if they needed to take off the headphones and run with an open speaker, they could. Most everything in here ran with headphones. Uh, it was all voice, and so it worked out pretty well with the, with the headphones in this area and all the, all the sideband operation, go to station, stuff like that. Sometimes it got a little loud, so next year we'll probably tweak that plan and maybe move, uh, put one of the CW stations in here and move one of the uh, sideband stations to, to one of the other rooms. I guess with earphones you can you can cut that noise out, but then when people are talking back, that's uh, th that's the issue if you have multiple stations all talking. So like you said, if you have maybe one on CW and one on voice, uh, you don't necessarily have that problem. Right, right. Uh, we even could, we've even already talked about next year possibly putting the PSK31 station in here. Uh, we lost it with about an hour to go today. Uh, we we've been running PSK31 and something. I think it was a computer. Don't know if it's a computer or the monitor or what it was, but something just quit. <laughs> and they, the yeah, it wasn't the radio. <laughs> Ray's over there. We know we know it wasn't that beautiful 7600, but uh, it was something something to do with the monitor or the PC or something. Well, something usually always quits on you. I mean, as much as stuff you guys had going here too. I mean, gee, you had a lot of a lot of things happening here. Uh, yes, we had quite a few wonderful things just while we were setting up it, we had a couple of laptops to die in the process of setting up and uh, different things uh, a lot of these laptops are owned by individuals rather than by the club or or uh, the EOC or anything like that and some folks brought their individual laptops in and we had troubles with them maybe not having the right audio player for stuff or you know incorrect drivers loaded or things like that so yeah there's always something it's ham radio so how, how many operators did, did well, the club, how many people did you have here? Uh, club members, I think we counted last night. At, at one time, we had 24 or 25 of our club members. Our club has 50 uh, on the roll right now, and we had about half of our club members here at one time yesterday. Well, yeah, you're probably right at mealtime. It was, it was probably closer to 35, something like that at mealtime. Oh, yes, yes, by all means. You know, hams love to eat, and uh, we this event, you know, we cooked on the grill. We had, had bratwurst and hot dogs and, and hamburgers, and, and everybody brought in a bowl or two of their favorite stuff and uh, big big time eating. So it was, yeah, a large crowd at supper time. All right, well, hey, Ray, get over here. Let's talk some. Ray, come on over here. He's, he's you know, I mean, I... And my yellow streak. Well, I've, I've noticed that, but I, I, I usually get those myself. You know. I initiated that last night. You know, I was the first one, so I won the contest of initiating the ICOM uh, Field Day T-shirt. Is, mu is that mustard or something? Mustard. mustard, yeah. You must have been eating hot dogs. Ray shared that with Facebook, all of our all of our Facebook family out there. So, uh, you know, he, I, he was doing me a favor. I, I got a bunch of shirts just like that. <laughs> he, he can't say he can't say ours because there were a lot of his friends from his work that commented. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So Ray, you 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 came down. Uh, I, I know you had a D Star thing Thursday night, and uh, uh, did that go over pretty good? Yeah, we had a real good crowd show up. I mean, uh, we had quite a few of the locals. Thirteen from the Nemra group showed up, and then we had folks as far away as Memphis. They drove at least what? How long is the drive from Memphis? Well, I don't know. We came from Molly Brant, probably about probably an hour and a half or so. So they they drove an hour and a half to come down here, and then uh, I didn't think they left till they were the last ones to leave too. Yeah. yeah. 9:15, when they left. Yeah. So we had we had a real good time, and then uh, yes, what is oh today's Sunday, so Friday was set up, and then Saturday getting on the air. Great time.
Well, we would have probably made it faster, but there's some really bad weather back the other way. In fact, right outside of Olive Branch, we stopped at a marine place. We tried to trade the truck in on a boat, but uh, they didn't have one with a top on it, so we just said we'll we'll come on in. But yeah, so man, you some flooding on that new building you you or the new shed you put back there is that now an arc? Well, let's just put it this way. There were six inches of water over the slab back there. So I don't think it's going to hurt, damage it or anything. I mean, we, we're we not putting anything on the floor back there that, that are damaged. But I, this was just really unusual. I was telling someone, we, we got, last night we got 10 inches of rain last night. Well, I, th I think we were blessed that we didn't have to shut down at all. Last year I was up in Rochester, Minnesota, and we had a few times where we had to come off the air. Um, I know I worked to the... Uh, the group formerly known as W3AO today, they were Whiskey 1 Alpha, Whiskey Stroke 3, and they were running a 28 Alpha. So they, they had a lot of stations on the air there and great signal. So quite a, quite a few big stations out there, a lot of RF in the air, and it was a great time from this end. Well, I hear the bands were really crowded. I mean, uh, they, they, it seems like there was a lot of activity on the air. And, of course, uh, we wish we'd got here a little earlier, but uh, unfortunately, uh, it, it is what it is. Uh, we did uh, leave Olive Branch uh, a little sooner than we thought because the guys were standing on top of picnic tables under the shelter, you know. So that's how bad it was down there. Uh, they had, I think, 60-mile-an-hour winds come through there. They were trying to hold everything down last night and uh, lightning. And uh, uh, the only thing having fun were ducks and geese. That, that place was surrounded with ducks and geese out there. But uh, did, did any of the weather really hit you guys right here? We got some sprinkles, and in the distance we saw saw some lightning and had some thunder flashes, but uh, we didn't have anything to amount to anything here at all. It was uh, it cooled off and was comfortable, but that was about it as far as the weather was concerned. We got some kind of secret conversation going over here. I, I was trying to catch what what they're talking about. Let's let's get get let's get him in here. Right. What what do you got? I don't think this man really got out of the chair. He operated CW on that 7800 and was working the whole time. But he was telling me a story that you're responsible for getting them back on the air again. 30 years ago? What did I do? No, what? Well, actually, uh, when you did the stream, the MFJ weekend to park thing for you, back, I had let my license expire. And I, my home had start. Well, I taught at Mississippi State. And Martin's Jews a very good friend. So while you were streaming all that stuff, I was in the chat room and made comments about how good MFJ is and enjoyed your stream. So and somebody said, well, why don't you just go back and get your license again? And so I did and followed you when you left in your truck all through start. Well, I was trying to give you directions, not realizing that there was a delay. And I said, don't turn there by those paternity houses. You're going to get lost. Well, you've already passed that. So, <laughs> well, it's actually the truth. It was the sorority houses. He went on past the fraternity houses and got to the sorority houses and slowed down. Kathy watching. <laughs> Kathy, uh, Kathy uh, I'm sure she was with us uh, there. Uh, uh, we, we've we've had some interesting rides, and, and and people like you would try to guide us. I remember our first first trip to uh, Huntsville. Uh, at, at one night, we were trying to find a, a a movie go to, and we were going down the road, and they were they were in the chat room and saying, "Okay, your 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 turn's coming up now." And we look, there's no turn here. Turn now, turn now. So we'd turn now, and then I said, "Where are you?" And that's not where we told you to turn. And uh, you know, it was like 30 second delay, and uh, we, you know. We couldn't hardly follow their uh, their instructions. You know. Well, next time I'll try to give you directions a day ahead of time. Okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> We're gonna have to do that for sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. To see us, it was a lot, a lot of fun. I watched y'all when you and Ray and I think uh, uh, WB4QDX and uh, then Robin Cutshaw were up at your house oh, in yeah, Memphis. Yeah. Watched that, and I'm a subscriber. Are you? Okay. Very good. Great. Thank you. And, and what's your call again? I've forgotten. No, it's WB5EIN. Okay, very good. Well, thanks a lot, man. Yeah, thanks. All right, well, let's let uh, man, it thinned out in here. People are probably just tired, weren't they? Well, we still have tear down today. Okay. So, and, uh, are y'all leaving? Are you leaving? Oh, okay. Bye-bye. Bye, Cindy. Bye, Cindy. Good to meet you.
we have to get everything uh, yeah. taken down, uh, cleaned up, packed up. Yeah. Okay. Before we can turn the lights out and lock the doors, so we'll be here for quite a while longer. Uh, there, there won't be any rushing getting away. Okay, well, I'm going to uh, take this break, and I'm going to check the chat room. that We left our computer in another room. I want to see what's going on in here. There, there may be questions for you guys or something, you know. Okay. So I'll, I'll be right back. Brady, you want to hold that or just hang on? So say it again, and where the people can hear you. Oh, okay. I would. I was saying that I should have mentioned a while ago. The only state that we did not uh, get this year uh, was Alaska. Ray, uh, I don't remember what the station was. Ray mentioned that he heard the uh, an Alaskan station last night, but the guy was uh, was not parking and barking. He was moving, and Ray couldn't run him down. And the only province that we didn't get was the uh, Northwest Territory in in Canada and uh, Canada. So we got uh, a solid red map of, of the U.S. and Canada, except for those two items. We actually got Hawaii and uh, everything in the Northeast. Uh, super, super job last night. That's good. Sounds like, man, you guys uh, worked hard all night. You worked every state out there, and did you work, uh, I guess, you worked like Puerto Rico and any of the sections? We got Puerto Rico and Hawaii and the Virgin Islands all. Mm-hmm. Sure All right. Uh, okay, uh, Ray, uh, there's been a bunch of people on there earlier today really waiting for us to get here so you could dance. Nope, not going to dance. Let's not start that again. No, I, I didn't start it. They did it, not me. No, 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 no. All right. All right. Well, in about 30 seconds, you're going to start seeing the comments here. 